what is effective and what is not effective for policies on health warnings. Health warnings are the focus of Article 11 of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, the world's first health treaty. The International Tobacco Control Project, otherwise known as the ITC Project, led by an international team of investigators, works to evaluate tobacco control policies and their effectiveness. As part of the evaluation of the Framework Convention article on health warning labels, the ITC project has released a report entitled Evidence and Recommendations from the ITC Project on the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, Article 11, Tobacco Warning Labels. ITC investigator Dr. Michael Cummings from the Roswell Park Cancer Institute spoke with co-investigators about the report. Dr. David Hammond of the University of Waterloo, Canada. Well, the general finding and, and almost universal principle, it seems, is that it's the really uh, engaging uh, warnings that em evoke some sort of negative emotion. And for the most part, these are the really graphic pictures of the mouth or uh, gangrene on the foot or rotting lungs, the ones that really give people an emotional charge. Of all the studies I'm aware of around the world, that is what smokers and non-smokers consistently say is most effective. It gets their attention. In fact, smokers in Canada still avoid the warnings with the mouth on it. There are other warnings that work well among uh, certain subpopulations. So, for example, many young women avoid the warning on pregnancy. And we found in Canada that uh, the most commonly avoided warning among males was the, was the impotence warning. They tell us in focus groups that, well, they may not necessarily believe it, but they don't want to see their girlfriend or another woman want to be seen holding this pack that associates them with impotence. Yeah. So um, maybe that's why the Marlboro man was always uh, by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ron Borland from the Cancer Council Victoria, Australia, offers insights into the findings. So in the U.S., we have you know, text warnings uh, that haven't changed. you think that we should be uh, changing the warnings? Absolutely. Uh, we know from our work that uh, the American text-based warnings, which are hidden away on one side of the pack, are noticed much less, are reacted to, importantly, much less uh, than warnings that are on the main faces of the pack, particularly on the front. And as I said before, if they're made even larger and uh, more graphic, they will get much stronger responses. So if the, if the US is serious about trying to discourage smoking, it really has no alternative but to go for stronger warnings. It is unconscionable to, have, to be selling cigarettes in packets that are bright and attractive without countering that with strong information about the harms that people are doing to themselves. Dr. Monsi Travers from the Roswell Park Cancer Institute, a health communications expert and co-investigator, also spoke about the study. So we're going to be conducting a study um, here in Western New York asking adult smokers and non-smokers, so 18 years and older, questions about what they think about different mock packs that we've created. And the packs differ. Some of them are different by the type of health warning that's on the pack. Some, are, some of them are different by the, um, the descriptor or the color or the label. And we're going to show people two packs and ask them different questions about what they think about the two packs based on how they differ.